15 miles southeast of downtown El Paso. Well, I think it takes you back in time here. Is the old Spanish presidio of San Elisario. We're a sleepy old west town. A community with centuries of history still standing today. You get a real good sense of uh, what life was back then. The town came to be when Spanish conquistador Juan de Oñate reached the Rio Grande on April 20th, 1598. And with the rise of Spanish power in the Rio Grande Valley, military protection became critical. When the Spanish came through the area here and uh, actually had what they call La Toma. La Toma, or taking possession of the land in the name of the Spanish king. By 1760, a settlement known as the Hacienda de los Tiburcios was founded here. And in 1789, the Presidio was built to protect the, the missions. The Spanish Presidio came to be. The missions, of course, were made to convert the natives to Catholicism. The missions at El Paso del Norte, Islera, Senecu, and Socorro all looked to San Elisario for protection. After decades of use, the Presidio was finally abandoned in 1821 when the Spanish withdrew from Mexico. The 13-foot adobe walls surrounding the fort were demolished. This aerial view of the town makes clear where the Presidio's boundaries were in relation to the Camino Real the main highway from Mexico to the Paso del Norte and beyond to the Pueblos of the North. Today, some of the most significant historic buildings are left behind, like its chapel, made from adobe painted white. Now, of course, it's got the Thunderbird look of the, of the Pueblos. Dating from the 1880s, it replaced earlier churches that were destroyed by floods. You'd never know it, but this treasure in San Elisario endured a devastating fire in the 1930s. The fire damaged everything, from the pillars that you see behind me to the vigas were all charred. The square pillars you see today conceal what was damaged in the blades. The roof also repaired. They ended up painting the, the tarnished tin up there with with uh, regular paint, uh, yellow, pink, and blue. Mm -hmm. So it's lasted quite a few years. The chapel is quiet. It brings a sense of tranquility and peace that seems to extend to the rest of the town. But back in the day... This was like a very busy town. San Elisario saw its share of action. This was the gateway to Mexico if you robbed a bank at the, in, in Kansas. Its jail, built in 1850, the moment when San Elisario became the first seat of El Paso County. Lillian Trujillo says her grandfather, Antonio Trujillo Sr. He was the law, they call him La Ley. Was a constable and deputy sheriff for nearly 50 years. He was so tall and powerful that people would just look at him and, oh, okay, I'll behave. <laughs> His photo, nailed to the wall of the old jail, now a museum. It's iron cells. So how tall is this? Manufactured in Chicago, transported by wagon over hundreds of miles of desert. It housed three to four inmates, Trujillo says. An old wanted poster adjacent to the cells tells an infamous story from 1876. Uh, there was a guy by the name of Melquia de Segura that was in town and got in some trouble. Now, people have said that he killed somebody. The arrest record that we found for him said he committed a lawless act. In that year, Billy the Kid tricked the sheriff at the time into believing he was a Texas Ranger. He then sprang loose his friend, Malquia de Segura, and escaped. Another historical building with stories to tell is Los Portales, built in about 1855. And originally this building belonged to Gregorio Garcia, who was a, an important man at that time. Garcia donated the building to the San Elisario community, and it served as the first public school in El Paso County. The school now turned museum. The adobe is deteriorating because it's adobe. It's still made of its original adobe bricks, with cottonwood vigas and a cattail thatch roof. People who live here say not much changes in this historic town. Many families multi-generational. The buildings continue to tell the stories of their ancestors. San Elisario, a treasure that lives on.